Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. Today, we're going to take a look at black and white adjustment layers, which are a useful way to quickly convert your images to black and white. Now, you might be thinking you're always going to want to use color images in video, but oftentimes a duotone or a high contrast black and white works really well, especially in areas like DVD menus or show bumpers. Let's see how to do this technique. I've got a picture open, and I'm currently working with a high def size frame here of 1280 by 720. Most of you are going to do black and whites by simply adding a hue saturation adjustment layer and stripping out the saturation, but that doesn't work so well because it really ignores the color values. In the real world, when you shoot black and white film, the color values impact the actual black and white conversion. If you simply desaturate the image, the only thing affecting the black and white is the luminance values. So you're going to get better results when you actually take those color values into judgment here. Let's see how. I'll go ahead and delete away that area there, and let's toss on a black and white adjustment layer. Now, you'll see here that the reds, yellows, and greens are impacting this, and we can go ahead and give different weight to the blue, for example, opening it up or closing it down, and that does a nice job. Cyans are going to affect the sky there a bit too. And you can see here with the reds, that we can really impact the rocks. In this case, we've got a really high contrast blue in the sky with lighter red for the rock. But you also notice a little bit of noise in the sky area there, which is sometimes going to happen with your digital photos. Let's go ahead and delete that away and choose Select Color Range, and we'll click on the sky here to make an initial selection. That worked well. We'll click OK. And Notice it inversed the selection because I had the invert box checked. No big deal. We'll just say select inverse. And let's choose filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and a value of three or four pixels will work well. That looks better. We reduce some of the noise in the sky. If we're getting too much in there, notice we got a little halo there. Let's undo that for a second. And we'll go to the refine edge command here and we'll just pull that in. Let's contract that edge just a little bit. And we could feather that. There we go. And we'll blur that now. Let's do a value of one. Good. Got a little bit of the noise picked up. Let's go back, add that black and white adjustment layer, and this time I'm going to click on this little finger icon, which allows me to click in the image and modify. So notice it automatically picks the correct value. So here I could take the cyans down a bit and also grab the blues. That's looking pretty good. Grab my reds and go ahead and push those to get a custom conversion. Get nice dramatic there. Play with the greens for the green grass and vegetation around the bank of the river there. I'll push those really dark. And you see we can really go after the individual values if I wanted to make the sky brighter, etc. So that works out quite nicely. But it doesn't just end there. You can actually do nice sepia tones or duotone effects. Just click on the tint layer here, and you'll see it actually tints the image. So this makes it really easy to get a nice effect. You can stylize that or go for a gentler brown, whatever you're looking for for the effect, or roll the hue towards a tint there. What's also nice is that this is really easy to reuse. So we can go here to a two side-by-side -side view. Let's go ahead here and just do this to float. And I'll gather those to a two up view. And we can now drag that and drop it over here. And you see that we get a nice matched effect. So it makes it really easy to reuse that adjustment layer. Now let's click back here for a second and we'll take that to a one up view. And I want to go ahead, we'll remove the tint and show you how this can have a spot color effect. To do that, turn off the adjustment layer, but leave it selected. The adjustment layer automatically has a mask applied. You could then choose Select Color Range, and we'll choose to use Localized Color Clusters and click within the sky. I can go ahead and click to add a little bit more. Let's pull the fuzziness and the range down, and just click and drag through the sky to pick up what we need. That worked well. Let's go ahead and fuzz that a bit. You'll notice the invert box is currently checked. That's fine. It'll actually inverse the selection and then click OK. And when we turn that on, 
you see we're getting our spot color effect. Now I could go ahead and refine that. I probably actually don't need to ignore the clouds here. So with the mask selected, we go back to the mask panel and click mask edge. And you see we could play with that. Or we could just go ahead and click the color range command here and pick up and add more by shift clicking to drag through. And that picked up the rest of that area there, which did a pretty good job. There we go. Click OK. And it updates, giving us that spot color effect. If you look closely down here, we got a little bit of stray color where the sky reflected in the river. No big deal. Click on the mask, grab our paintbrush tool, and press D for default colors. And just paint with white to clean that up. So. Great technique for doing custom black and white conversions. Very flexible with that black and white adjustment layer. If you're using Photoshop Extended, you can also apply this to video clips. My name's Rich Harrington. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Photoshop for Video. And I invite you to check out our resource blog at photoshopforvideo.com. Thanks again.